Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Thursday morning devotion of Clontarf Beach Baptist Church. It's great that you can join us. For several uh, weeks already, probably even a couple of months now, I've been speaking on the theme of discipleship. But today, uh, at least for now, this will be my last talk on this topic. Of course, discipleship is a very, very big subject, and there is really so much more that can be said about it. But moving forward, I'll just touch on the discipleship aspect of things, or the leading of other people to know and grow in Jesus, as I talk on other topics of Scripture. Discipleship, after all, should be an integral part of our lives, or of our lifestyles as followers of Jesus, and not just a separate component that we do on certain days of the week or certain events. Rather, discipleship should be an outflowing of the ever-constant work of the Holy Spirit in our daily lives as children of God. Uh, sure, there are such things as discipleship conferences or outreaches or evangelistic events, you know, specific occasions when when we focus on and deliberately uh, talk about discipleship and where we deliberately uh, organize and participate in set events to reach out to people. Those are definitely uh, parts of discipleship. But even more so, discipleship should happen as, again, as I mentioned, as a part of our everyday lives as Christians, just as it was with Jesus while he was on the earth. In the things that he did in his uh, daily life, he helped people get to know him better. And in fact, Jesus is still actively doing discipleship right now. And he does it through the Holy Spirit who is living in us. So right now, we as Christians, as Christ's disciples, we are his hands and feet in the world. We are um, how the Holy Spirit moves in the world. Of course, he will also move um, in a spiritual sense, but in a more physical, tangible sense, the Holy Spirit uses us. He moves in us. Jesus moves through us. Remember the later part of the Great Commission in uh, Matthew twenty-eight nineteen to 20? Jesus said, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely, I am with you always to the very end of the age. So, if you are a Christian, even right now, and to the very end of time, Jesus himself is with us in our daily lives as we go and make disciples. In fact, it, it probably is uh, appropriate to say even that it is Jesus himself who is still making disciples, again, through us as he is with us. So it is Jesus that people who, it is actually Jesus who people deal with when discipleship happens. Not, you know, it's not just us. We are simply the vessels or the tools even that Jesus uses to interact and to draw people to himself. Of course, there will, there will always be a spiritual component to that as well. But we are um, the tangible physical component of that. And, and for me, that's actually a great comfort to know. Because um, in leading people to Christ or in helping them to grow in Jesus, it, it helps me to know that ultimately, those things are not dependent on simply on what I can do. Rather, it is Jesus' interaction with people through the Holy Spirit moving through me that enables discipleship to happen. And my only part in it is to offer my best. Of course, I want to offer my best in obedience to Jesus as the Holy Spirit leads and empowers me. So when God asks me to speak to someone or to do something for someone, uh, again, with the intent of helping them to get to know and or, or grow in Jesus more, 
it's not really the the cleverness of my words or my training or my practice oh, those things could help or or the effectiveness of my actions that lead people to Christ it's really not those things rather it is Jesus himself um, speaking and moving um, through me through my obedience that enables people to get to know or grow in him so it, it doesn't really stand or fall on what I can do or my abilities but it's still uh, the work of Christ Jesus moving through us in 1st Corinthians chapter 3 verses 5 to 9 this is how the Apostle Paul described God's work through his own life and, and the life of other disciples around him and he mentions um, Apollos by name as, as, as one of the other disciples so Paul says um, again this is 1st Corinthians chapter 3 verses 5 to 9 this is what Paul says um, I'm, uh, sorry, from verse 5 what after all is Apollos and what is Paul only servants through whom you came to believe as the Lord has assigned to each his task I planted the seed Apollos watered it but God has been making it grow so neither the one who plants nor the one who is nor, nor the one who waters is anything but only God who makes things grow the one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose and they will each be rewarded according to their own labor. So as, as we can see in, in that short passage there, it is God that enables people to get to know Jesus and, and to grow in Him through the Holy Spirit's interaction with them. But we are each given a task to accomplish in relation to that. And we get rewards as we obey God's leading for us. So, it is already a great privilege to be part of God's salvation plan for the world, you know, that big plan of salvation, which of course uh, is through discipleship and the work of uh, Jesus through people and through the Holy Spirit. So, that's a great privilege. Imagine being used by God directly or even indirectly to help someone to get to heaven or to help someone grow in Jesus. It's such a great privilege to be part of that. And even if sometimes we don't see the fruit of our labor, even if at times people don't seem to respond to God, they just refuse no matter how much we love them and reach out to them, we don't have to be discouraged. Because as Paul said, we will each be rewarded according to our own labor. So God's reward for us isn't based on the people's responses. God's reward or His pleasure in us is simply based on our trust and obedience of Him. So I encourage you this morning, try it out for yourselves. Obey Jesus' call for you to make disciples and you will experience his pleasure his reward in you as you actually do it as you trust in him and uh, go out and make disciples and Jesus is calling you to do this today and he has those great rewards ready for you if you follow him and again don't think don't think that you are not qualified or that you are not ready yet to be Jesus' disciples. Remember, Jesus is the one that makes you ready through the Holy Spirit. He's the one that makes you capable. Uh, he's the one that gives you wisdom uh, and guidance the moment that you trust in Him. And of course, trust is displayed in obedience. We can say that we trust God if we don't actually do what He says. So trust is displayed in obedience. So do that. Let's, let's all take that step of faith, that step of trust in Jesus. And let's seek how he wants us to go out and make disciples. We can do it through him moving in us. Now, if you aren't Jesus' disciple yet, if you haven't been living for Christ, 
then simply turn to Jesus today. Change your mind about the way you live, about your sin, and about Jesus' authority over you. And tell Jesus that you want to surrender to Him, that you want to surrender the control of your life to Him. And by doing this, Jesus will not only give you eternal life and forgiveness of sins. I mean, those things are already great. Those things are already amazing. But apart from that, Jesus will also enable you to help others to get to know and grow in Him as well. Because that is what Jesus' disciples do, after all. We help others to get to know and grow in Jesus. And He Himself empowers us to do that. Now, if you're a disciple of Christ, again, maybe you've just become a disciple of Jesus uh, today, or maybe you've been a disciple or a Christian for many years already, then start living out your calling. Start living out what you are, a follower of Jesus, a disciple of Christ. How do we live it out? We go and make disciples. That is what Jesus is asking all of us to do. To go and make disciples, to help other people come to know Jesus either for the first time or come to know Jesus more and more. And Jesus has rewards ready for us. He has rewards ready for you as you follow him. So Jesus promised he is with us even to the very end of the age as we obey him. He is with us to lead us and to empower us to accomplish his good will. So we don't have to worry about our own personal skill, our own wisdom, or the support or the comfort, the comfort or the resources that we need. Jesus promises to be with us and Jesus will give us exactly what we need when we need it if we are willing to trust in Him. So isn't that a great comfort? Oh, also, we are here, your fellow disciples, your brothers and sisters in Christ. We're also here to help each other out too. So if you have questions, if you need any help or support or prayer regarding discipleship or really anything at all, then let us know. You, you just contact me or the other pastors or the other church leaders or your other Christian friends to help you out. And we'll do our best to, to support each other as we all work together in obedience uh, of our Lord and Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. So I encourage you again this morning. Let's all do that. Jesus is calling us to do this. And so let's all go out and do our part in making disciples and helping people to get to know or to grow in Jesus. So as we close, let me just pray for all of us. And uh, I, it's my prayer that we truly be encouraged and really motivated to obey Jesus in discipleship. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this morning. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your promise that you are with us. And it is your work to make people your disciples, uh, to help people to experience good eternal life with you, that so that people would come to live lives, good lives, even here in this world, but even more so in eternity with you. We thank you that you have our best interest in mind, and we thank you for giving us the privilege to be part of your plan of salvation in this world. Help us to change our minds and our focus regarding the things of our lives. Sometimes we focus on other things rather than um, prioritizing the things that you have um, given us to do. Uh, change our hearts, change our minds, Lord Jesus. And of course, uh, encourage us and empower us to really seek after and accomplish your will in our lives. We trust you for this, Lord God. We trust that you can change us and we trust that you can move us and motivate us to do the good things that you want us to do. So we surrender ourselves to you again this morning. We pray for your wisdom. We pray for your leading. And again, we pray for the ability that we need to accomplish your will in our lives. Help us to make disciples, Lord Jesus. Help us to be your good disciples. We commit our ourselves to you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, thank you again for joining us, everybody. I'll, I'll still be here 
uh, and the other pastors will be uh, here doing the daily devotions. So that's Monday to Fridays. And of course, there are the full Sunday services uh, that are broadcast live also here on the Facebook page, uh, uh, Facebook page of Clontarf Beach Baptist Church. Um, Sunday morning, I think this Sunday morning, it will be at 8.30 a.m. So rather than the usual 9.30, this Sunday is 8.30 a.m. That's a special um, service time for this coming Sunday. And the afternoon one, uh, stay tuned to that. I, I failed to check the time, but I think it's still 6 p.m. 6 p.m. this afternoon, but it's scheduled to be earlier um, on further announcements, probably by next month. All right, that's all, everybody. Have a great day. Bye.